Here's the problem with the hollow rock is that the hollow rock is a very specific gymnastics movement and it's a position that we see a lot in gymnastics. But if I were to deadlift, I would never deadlift with a hollow body, right? Mm -hmm. If I were to walk down the street, I would never walk with this hollow body. And what I see is with a lot of my athletes, I say, hey, let's train this position and now let's try to apply it. And guess what happens when they try to apply it? There's no application because they just doesn't know, they don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. So one of the tests I do with them, and I'm going to put you guys on the spot right now, is this. I'm going to flip you over onto your belly. So you're going to go on your belly just like this. And we're going to put our forehead down. You can actually put your hands here right next to your side like you're about to do a push-up. So get into that position and it's going to feel compromising for a second. But I'm just going to ask you to do a couple things. First thing you're going to do is you're going to try to pick your belly off the ground but keeping your forehead and your, the balls of your feet on the ground. See what that looks like, what that feels like. Go ahead and pick it up. Let's see if you can pick your belly up. John is the man, he has application. Eric, we have a little bit of this uh, butt duck going on. I call this the broken butt syndrome. <laughs> so go ahead and rest a little bit. And Eric, we're gonna actually look at you. John, check this out. Let's watch Eric here just for a second. I'm just gonna put him on the spotlight. Do you see how his butt is kind of sticking out there? That means that he's leaking some sort of performance. And he's like, oh, I think I'm in the position. That, you know, Carl just told me to get my belly button off the ground, right? Yeah. That should be okay. It's not good. Yeah, <laughs> feels good, right? <laughs> if it feels good, it looks good. Right? Yeah, he exactly. Looks like he overextended his back's arch. Yeah, so he's a little arch. He's a little broken there. Therefore, if he were to be sitting for eight days in this position, trying to generate power output, he's most likely leaking somewhere. And when he fatigues, he's going to be a little broken, right? So, how do we train John to understand these things? Very simple. Go ahead and lie down again on your belly. Eric. Eric, Charlie. <laughs> I was looking at John. He has a mustache, he has a mustache, same thing. John, Eric, no, you have to care. Here, butt tight, that's the first thing, squeeze your butt. If you squeeze your butt, you're gonna be able to neutralize your spine a little bit. Now, the second thing I want you to do is I want you to start pulling your ribs up into your spine, but keeping your butt low. Yeah, like that. So ribs up a little higher, keep your butt low. Do you see how that's a way better position? His belly is still off the ground now, but he's starting to find a better position. I want you to drop your butt even more. Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it. There, that's your position. You see how that neutralized? Now his back is tight. Eric is strong in this position, and now he has all the connective tissue into his spine, and he'll be able to generate power through the shoulders. So that's number one. Do you feel that? Mm-hmm. So did that position feel different? Yeah, it definitely felt a lot more solid. You know, it definitely felt like you're in one straight line rather than having any bend through your torso. Exactly. So that's kind of position number one. And what <laughs> happens is that when we challenge the body, you know, through space in different positions, things change, things start pulling and pushing in different directions. But how do we correct ourselves? How do we find that original position, right? So one of the things that you said earlier is that if I'm kayaking and I have to roll, how do I get out of that roll, mm -hmm. right? All of a sudden I'm upside down and I have to do these movements that they've taught me and I have to reach and swipe kind of thing. You're just like, how do I get back up, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the fundamental place to start and just to create that fundamental awareness. So that's number one, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's get fancy. So let's get back on our back and we're gonna do this. So we're gonna start with our legs straight. We're in that hollow body position. And all we're gonna do is this. We're gonna go legs out, arms out. We're gonna go, this is called a happy star, right? You look like a happy star. And we're gonna try to cross one leg over, one hand over. And this crossing is our first challenge to resist rotation. Can you do that a couple times? And this thing is our hands and feet meeting right on top of our hips. If you do that just 10 times, and you look and see what happens here, and trying to make the legs big and spreading the legs out, the arms out, you start feeling like, okay, there's a lot of rotational business happening here. There's a lot of work going down. Happy stars, <laughs> right? And this is kind of your first expression of getting into a good position and then having to resist rotation as you actually move, right? Simple. More challenging than actually sitting in a boat but that's what we do in the gym. We exaggerate reality so we can apply better, mm -hmm. right? Now we say, hey, okay, you guys got that? We're gonna go and stand up now. And we're gonna go into something we do with the kids a lot and it's just called a bear walk. And it looks like this. Let's go over here, guys. Come over to this, to this edge. 
And we're gonna start with our feet shoulder width apart or a little wider. See, you're getting warm. Getting warm. I like it. See? Immediately, Eric was worried about getting warmed up. I'm like, don't worry, you'll be sweating in a second. Carl, Carl's always warm, so, you know. Check it out, it's the, <laughs> it's, it's the fit. So now, this is what you gotta do. Feet flat, hands flat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk, alternating hands and legs, we're just walking. Key thing here is that you're kind of looking at your feet, tucking your head in, and thinking about driving the hips up high. So, yeah, John has good mobility here, so he can actually get his hips nice and high. Eric is a little bit tighter, it's just because he's a model and tall, and that's what happens, you know, when you're on the catwalk. So he's a little tighter, but the positions are good. And now, when you get to the end, can you walk backwards? And what I want you to imagine, guys, is as you're walking, remember, we want to create stability in the hips, stability in the spine. So imagine you're carrying a glass of water on your hips. How stable, yeah, that just changed a lot. This just stabilized and got a little bit more silent. Do you feel the difference, how the movement becomes a little bit more tense? It feels like there's more resistance? Mm -hmm. That's key. Yeah, when you get to the end, just go ahead and stand up. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you guys watch me in the beginning, you guys, when you were walking, there was a lot of this. <laughs> the hips were moving, and then all of a sudden, you're just like, oh, silent. That's what it feels like. If I have to paddle down a river for eight days or whatever, and every time I paddle, there's a little shift, I'm leaking some sort of performance, I will lose traction throughout full range of motion. So this is kind of step two and saying, hey, let's keep this really stable, really controlled. And all I had to do is say, hey, uh, be aware of this, and your training will carry on, right? It will carry over to your actual application. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's kind of step two. Now is when we get a little crazy, right? Uh, a lot of this is pulling, right? That's kind of that shoulder going into extension is you pulling. The cool thing about it is that it happens at mid-range. If I say, okay, my shoulder range goes from overhead to behind my back, mid-range is somewhere around here. That's the good thing about it is that paddling happens at mid-range. So in your training, it's great if you're doing pull-ups, it's great if you're doing dips and some you know, high pulls with a bar and some other things, but I think for specific application, a lot of your work happens here. It's kind of at mid-range, it's that ring row kind of thing. So something we can do is we can take it over here. I'm actually gonna bring a bar out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And, uh, and I'll show you how you can start actually developing that pull with a little bit of resisting the rotation. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring a bar out and we'll make it happen.